Hello to all of you bold, beautiful, brilliant, and highly evolved souls. I'm Davina, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you're a regular, thank you always for being here. And the purpose of my, my channel is really to hopefully um, allow you to feel a little more validated and a little less alone, because this is definitely can be a lonely long road. So today I wanted to share with you um, a little bit more on hypo arousal and some tips on sort of managing it or um, working through it a little bit. So um, I talked a little bit in my last video about hypo arousal. This is, it's a flashback state um, <clears throat> and it's a state of low low arousal. So um, the the common feelings here are shame, hopelessness, helplessness, depression, um, possibly loneliness. And um, yeah, generally, you know, a low energy, low ability to sort of function. And um, it can be very frustrating to be there. You're just in a real disconnect, kind of a shutdown mode. So what happened in our childhood was that, um, you know, when we um, we kept trying and trying to to gain our parents' love or approval or acceptance, and um, when nothing was changing, um, and we didn't meet with success, you know, we instead of feeling this hopelessness, which was there we believed that it was because of us. It was because we were somehow innately flawed and we had to like try harder. So we would try harder to please them and harder to please them. And then we would get that intermittent reinforcement. So once in a while we'd get that little crumb and that would keep us just like a gambler, you know, just keep trying. Cause that one time you might, you know, <clears throat> you might hit the jackpot and get a little bit of care or affection or something resembling love which of course narcissists can't give. So this is how we get into kind of a learned kind of helplessness. We sometimes think that, um, you know, no matter what I do, nothing, nothing's working. It's not changing. I, I don't have power. And that is such a horrible, horrible thing to happen to a child is to learn that my actions or my cries for help and support are not you know, don't matter. And, you know, a child can feel very then helpless. Like if I cry out for my mom, for my mommy to support me, to comfort me, and, and she doesn't, we learn our actions don't matter and don't, don't affect change in the world. So this can bring about a kind of a learned helplessness and a kind of give up. And that's the kind of fawn and fold. I've kind of given up trying. I'm just going to now fawn and try to please you because I, I can't seem to, to get any kind of affection or acceptance from you. So this can happen in, in this hypo arousal state. And I've, I've been in unemployment recently. And so this, I'm learning a lot about this. So I just want to share whatever I'm learning here with you. So I got into that feeling of like, shame and self-blame and feeling like a failure, um, feeling like, um, you know, I can't, I'm stuck and I can't change the situation no matter how hard I try. Um, nothing I do kind of makes a difference. I'm trying and trying and trying, but I'm just not getting the positive results. And um, yeah, so this kind of just led me down into a spiral. Um, I'm kind of a little bit out of it now. So this is just good. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, so in this state, um, we really lost connection with ourselves and our bodies, and it can be really a, a weird, disorienting, detached kind of feeling, um, really kind of a lost feeling. And it's, it's, it's not pleasant. It really isn't, can be scary. And, um, we've also, our energy is down and, um, and you probably also have some brain fog to go along with that. So, um, and it's just in general, it's just very, very difficult to then self-regulate at all because 
you know, I'm disconnected from my body, so I can't tell what I need. So it makes it very hard to like get out of this because I'm like, what do I need to do? I'm just like, oh, like I'm kind of in this zombie, like I can hardly move around, kind of moving from one chair to like, um, and if you're in that like really kind of severe kind of hypo arousal, it's, it's totally fine just to give in, just to allow it, just to like curl up in bed, just allow your body to like, to be in that state. And that can be hard to do, but, um, because the shame will tell you, but I gotta do something. I should be doing something. And what should I be doing? And, um, but, um, one thing I was doing is just watching a movie. I would just like, I, I can't do anything. I'm, I can't function really very well. Um, and so, yeah, I would just turn on a movie and, and watch a movie for a couple hours and just, it just also got my mind off things. And, um, of course, you know, in limitation, you don't want to do this all the time because then it's just a total escape from what you're feeling, but as a temporary kind of find a distraction just to, um, to get you through that, um, if it's, if it's not that severe, then possibly, you know, we can do things to kind of work through it. So, um, I went from like watching movies just to sort of cope. And then now, like yesterday I was able to sort of, um, just gently nudge myself to, um, number one is move. Um, just try to do some movement because it is like a real shutdown, frozen kind of state, almost paralyzing sometimes. And so just start with the, like, keep it really simple, really easy. And just find like, just turn your head, like just even just moving your head, doing some neck rolls, you know, um, and, um, or, you know, even if you have a list of like your three best favorite easy stretches that you can do so that when you're in this day you go okay I'm going to do these three stretches because it can be hard to get there it's like our motivation is gone too so it's just like oh everything feels pointless and um you might not want to do anything <clears throat> so just like yeah I think what I did yesterday is I um yeah I just started also doing some deep breathing that can also help Try very, yeah, very, um, you know, gentle, deep breathing. Just notice your, your chest, like really feeling up with breath and hold your breath and then deep, long exhale. Because when we're in, again, this mode, it, it can be, our, our breathing can become very shallow. So it can just, again, just um, remind yourself that I'm here and I'm breathing and I'm alive, you know, like, um, and um, yeah, just bring some, some energy in to start getting that breath flowing. Um, so that's also kind of a movement. Um, and if you can, you know, get out of, get out of your house or your apartment and get into some nature or just go for a slow walk, you know, um, just try to go around the block just so your body is moving a little bit. And if you can't do that, then just move to a different room in your house, you know, or lay in, try a different position instead of sitting in a chair or sit on the floor, just something to like change things up a bit. <clears throat> um, that even just sends these, just the tiniest, tiniest even signal to your brain, like, oh, I can change, you know, I can affect change in my world, you know. Um, the next one is to connect and we want to try and connect with our bodies, of course, and this can be a difficult, so it may not be the best time to do something like a body scan, yoga nidra, meditation, because we can just get more frozen. I noticed that I'm like, this isn't working. Um, like my body scans work great when I'm in hyper arousal. And this is kind of my go to but for this, if I do it for too long, I'm just like, whoa, you know, so maybe a short short meditation, short body scan. And then, um, yeah, try to connect with somebody or with nature or with a pet or just make some sort of connection. So um, the other day I was just sitting in nature. The walk didn't really work because I was too much in it. And um, 
I just found it was, wasn't grounding enough, but I went outside just in the backyard and just laid there and looked up at the trees. And it was actually just beautiful. It was a beautiful kind of moment because I was in such a slow-mo um, state. It almost, you know, brought out some, some things. Like I saw the leaves and the colors and the shadows and the lighting and it was it was pretty cool a little hummingbird came by and it just seemed kind of even magical so um try to like squeeze out those little moments of beauty in your day and um yeah so nature can be very grounding and very just obviously can help you feel connected to the world and then to yourself um if you're if you're living alone and you don't have anyone around you, like just go out to like a go to the grocery store and pick up an avocado or a banana or something just so you can like look at the cashier person in their eyes and like say hello, how are you? Just to feel like some sort of human connection that you're part of this world and that you belong here. Um, of course, if you have a safe friend to call or to contact, text, um, do that. Um, just make sure it's, of course, make sure it's safe because in this state, you might be feeling very, very vulnerable because your defenses have just been shut down. <clears throat> so, you know, make sure you do listen to that inner child and do things that feel safe. So move and connect. And the third thing, if you can get to it, is... Um, to try to take some sort of empowered action and that might not be possible right away so wait until you're kind of a, you know a little bit more sort of functional and and try to take an empowered action to to send that again that message to yourself like i can change things you know it is possible to bring a sense of yeah possibility even the smallest bit of possibility or hope to yourself that might be setting a boundary or sending an email or yeah, for me applying to a job or um, just doing some sort of action to get you out of that um, feeling of, of real helplessness. And I guess just a final tip, like, yeah, it's, it can be really hard because we're in, you know, we're our, our functioning is shut down. So like, just keep it really simple and easy this is not the time when you want to like be doing your taxes or learning a new language. Although that, I don't know, maybe that can do something to your brain, but we want to try and keep things simple and just gradually, slowly um, um, bring ourselves from that frozen to a state of more movement and energy. And um, it could take hours. It could even take days to sort of pull us out of that. And um it's not our fault. It's not our fault that we're in that flashback in the first place. So yeah, um, but we do have, you know, a little bit of power to, to, to affect change when, when we're in these kind of states. So um, that is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I hope that was a little bit helpful or as I said, just validating and I'm wishing you many many blessings on your journey of healing and awakening. And I'm Davina at Boldness Blooming.